Go to commandment number two on the left. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. What? That's commandment number two. Wait a minute. Let's go back to Exodus. Commandment number three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Oh, well, what? wait a minute. I thought that's commandment number two. Well, commandment number three on the left is to keep the holy the Sabbath day. On the right, that's commandment number four. Commandment number five is you should not kill. Commandment number five in the Bible is honor your father and mother. Commandment number six, don't commit adultery. Number six on, in the Bible is you shall not kill. You notice what's happening. They're switching commandments. Y'all see that? They've erased commandment number two, and I'm going to show you what they do. Down at the bottom, notice commandment number nine and commandment number ten. You should not covet your neighbor's wife. You should not covet your neighbor's goods. Watch the commandments from the Bible. Seven, you should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You shall not bear false witness is number nine, which, by the way, on the left is number eight. So if they're going to get rid of commandment, they got to somehow come up with a way to come up with ten. So what did they do? They took the tenth commandment and split it in half. Okay? So they took, you should not covet your neighbor's house, and the neighbor's wife, or his maidservant, et cetera, et cetera. You know what they did? They took that commandment, put it in two, so they could erase one of the Ten Commandments. And what was the Ten Commandment they erased? The second commandment said, you will not make graven images, and you will not bow down to graven images. Did you know that that's the theme of the Catholic Church? You see over on the left is uh, what appears to be you know, clothes laying there. Those are men laying on their stomach before an image of Mary. Matter of fact, you have to go way up there, right there, to see Im the image of Mary. And here these guys are bowing down, right here bowing down. These guys, on their knees, these guys are on their faces bowing down. Notice this little family as they're in prayer and on their knees bowing to Wait a minute, here's Jesus, but whoa, whoa, you can't go to Jesus because he's kind of ticked, so you've got to go to his, ma his mother. <laughs> and his mother will get you to him. Now, that sounds a little funny, but that's not what they believe. And uh, she's, your only, she's your only access. See, they'll say, well, you know, Jesus is the way to God, but Mary's the only way to Jesus. Okay? So anyway... Um, <clears throat> Let's get to some more of this. So it is a universal religious system that has taken upon itself the place of God in ruling over the lives of multitudes on the earth. Did you remember it saying that? That she's seated on all the waters. Well, now watch this. This is interesting because let's go back to verse 1. I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants have been made drunk with her for prostitution, we'll say, her unfaithfulness. Well, this is interesting because when it says the kings of the earth, what religious system is known? Now, let's stop here for a second. What religious system is known for being a city. And by the way, that city is a nation. The Vatican is its own nation. They have their own army. They have their own, the, their own government, everything. That little tiny city of the Vatican. And it happens to be on seven hills. But what other religious system sits a sit, that's a city represented a religious system as a city sitting on seven hills? It's notoriously associated with mystery Babylonian system. It is arrayed with purple and gold, uh, purple and scarlet and gold and precious stones. And it has the audacity to rule over the people and claim with blasphemous statements that it has authority to be God on this earth. And now we get to this one, that it literally associates and fornicates itself with the leaders of the political systems. 
What one can you think of? Because this is literally what this religious hierarchy is known for. Matter of fact, back in November, a couple years ago, the Saudi Arabia's King Abdullah met with the Pope at the Vatican, which was the first time that the Roman Catholic met with a, a Saudi, uh, Saudi uh, monarch, and they met, and the ideal was, as the priest, or as the Pope of the world, the man who represents Christ to the world declares that he wants to promote peace and justice and moral values for all the religions of the world. Now, we'll find out in another time why that's so critical to all this. Incidentally, this is why she's in so much trouble, folks. For verse 1, John is being told, Dude, I want you to come and see this woman get her judgment. Because She's in trouble. Why is she in trouble? Because she's been unfaithful and she's gotten in bed with the leaders of the world to gain wealth and fame while she's disowned her love for the truth. See, because in her mind, who cares about truth? Don't really matter if you're telling the truth. I just want to get fame. I want to have wealth. That sounds like a harlot. That don't sound like a faithful virgin who's getting ready to get married to her husband. This is the woman who sells out to the highest bidder. Incidentally, this is talking, and this, we're, we're trying to point out some identity. This is a universal religious system that has prostituted itself to anyone and everyone to gain wealth, influence, and political power. So think about it. Here is a whore that's going to help join the religions of the world together. That's exactly the focus, and if anybody has studied the whole system of what has just recently happened. I'll give you a, pr a prime example. Just a couple weeks ago, right before the G8 meeting, uh, and our president was a part of that G8 meeting, and it was there at the G8 meeting that the president of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, stood up and showed the new, quote, universal coin. The new one world coin. Right before he did that, the Pope said that what the world needs right now coming up out of this is a one world political leader. Hello. Well, it is quite interesting when you see that these popes have, especially as time has gone on, have become more and more uh, enthralled with the ideal of uniting all religions together as one. During uh, Pope John Paul's funeral, over four million pilgrims arrived in Rome, a city that only has three million residents. The funeral had the, listen to this folks, the world's largest TV audience for any event exceeding two billion viewers, hundreds of world leaders, attended the funeral of the Pope, reported to be the largest such gathering in world history. We saw that happen just a few years ago, including four kings, five queens, 70 presidents, and prime minister, and 14 leaders of other religions. What was the marked thing about this whore? What was the marked point about it? She is noted for her connection with all the world. She's prostituted herself, not with just the leaders of the world, but the inhabitants of the world are drunk with her fornication. And this is no doubt why the beast is so willing to carry her for this short time. Because he is going to get every advantage that he can out of her particular uh, progression. Incidentally, when visiting the Pope, others must wear dark so that his purity stands out. As you see in all these pictures coming up, these are the world leaders. Those, those are two uh, pr uh, uh, pr previous Russian leaders. Of course, when you look at these, even going back way in our nation's history, there's Kennedy, uh, of course, Bush, Johnson, and... Uh, of course, uh, Clinton and Carter and Reagan. All these leaders, when they appear before the Pope, they're not allowed to dress in white because that would make him look like they're equal to him. 